we gather on a day when we are inaugurating and placing a monument of St. John Paul II. He grew up in a loving family in Poland. And as a young boy, he began to grow into this relationship with Jesus. He became someone who prayed very often. He was known as a person of prayer, even as he was growing up. His relationship with Jesus was one of love. And we know that his life was not without suffering as he was growing up. At the age of eight, he lost his mother. And before he was 20, he had lost his father and his elder brother, and the youngest of all, well before that. And during the war years, people saw him as being courageous because of the way he protected others from the enemy. He was especially committed to caring for Jewish families. He risked his life. His faith in Christ, his faith in Jesus gave him the courage and the strength to do what he did for others. He grew to be convinced of the dignity of every human being because of what he saw going on around him, the destruction of human life, of people's lives. He wanted people to have a sense of value and respect and be given a sense of dignity and the importance of caring for one another. He became a great leader of the faith in Poland, in Krakow. People were inspired by him. They looked to him. And in the end, the Universal Church looked to him. And he became the leader of our Catholic community. He visited so many countries. He was on pilgrimage to so many countries. Again, he was the bearer of God's good news of Jesus Christ. He sought to be a true shepherd to our community of faith. He brought consolation and new hope to people wherever he went. And he had a great love for Mary, the mother of the Lord. And wherever he went, no matter what country he went to, no matter what place he went to, he always went to a shrine where Mary, the mother of the Lord, was a part of that community. It was important to him. When his mother died at the age of eight, his father took him to a Marian shrine a few days later and said to him, the Virgin Mary will look after you now. And Mary became a second mother to him. And he always remembers his father doing this for him. At the age of eight, he remembers as an adult. And his decision to become a priest was also influenced by reading from St. Louis de Montfort that story of Mary. And he said that book, reading that book, helped him to finally say yes to wanting to go forward and to be a priest. His motto told us to us, I am all yours, and all that is mine is yours. Again, these are the words that come from that book on Mary. Mom. 
And when he was writing his speeches, and when he was writing his books, these words were on the beginning of each letter and of each book. Why? Because he was offering each of his works to Mary. When he was shot on May 13th, 1981, it was the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. And he always looks back and he is very conscious of believing that Mary, the mother of the Lord, the mother of God, protected him from losing his life that day. And he went back to Fatima in Portugal a couple of times during his time as a pope, during, our, during his time. We gathered because there was something about this man who was so courageous and so life-giving at a particular time when the world needed him, when the communist world was, was still very strong, but his presence and his leadership had so much to do with overcoming that, addressing that. You can even sense today in this time we're living through the struggles of trying to find peace, how important it is to continue to pray to Mary, the Mother of the Lord, the Queen of Peace. <clears throat> so for all of us again, as disciples of Jesus, not to underestimate that relationship, it's a relationship of love that Jesus has for us and we have for the Lord. And out of that relationship, comes the possibilities of sharing that kind of love, kindness, that kind of commitment, that kind of fidelity, the willingness to risk to do our best for others, to make our world a better place. And at this time, to make our world a more peaceful place and how our relationship with Mary is all part of that as well. The intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. And just as that relationship was very, very much a part of the life of St. John Paul II, so too, as we gather this afternoon, that relationship with Mary is important to us. And in honouring St. John Paul II, we're acknowledging how much Mary's presence was a part of his life, but also a part of the life of all disciples, all of us here. Because Mary leads us to Jesus, leads us to the person of Jesus. So we give thanks for the gift of faith. And all our children and the young people, we pray that that faith might touch them as well. That they too will grow up and become people who will gift their love to others as well, following the path of their Jesus. May yes, God to bless, bless our families and bless all of us as we continue to be a precious people in the world, to truly be faithful to Him as missionary disciples. So, brothers and sisters, today, here at Tabernu Shrine, we are celebrating the life of St. John Paul II, who led the church so faithfully, bravely and wisely, and now see the face of God our Father in heaven. Increase our love for Mary, the mother of your son, and my Christ live with him as all the days of our life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world in which we live, that it may be free from the divisions and sin 
and become one day the new heaven and the new earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the needy, the sick, and the dying. May, be, may they possess one day with uh, St. John Paul II, the kingdom prepared for them from the foundation of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Give peace to those who live in fear, courage to those who have lost hope and faith, to those who live in doubt. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, St. John Paul II loved Mary, your mother, intensely. Through his intercession, help us to become like Mary in faith, love, and obedience and to play our part in the saving work of your Son. This we ask through the same Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. John Paul II, who means to our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
stir up in us the fire of charity, which blessed John Paul II burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace. When it was raining on us continuously for it to stop, and so it did, and it did so in abundance. We now experience the good weather, and it is a special gift for the founder of the shrine, Father Benedict Camilleri, who wanted so much that the statue of John Paul II will be here. Father Benedict, Monsignor, had a deep experience of the coronation of the image of Our Lady of Tapino in the island Gozo, of Gozo. His experience continued and today he takes a concrete form with the erection and consecration of the statue of John Paul II. We express our great attitude to Bishop Martin Hart, whose goodness of pastoral service become a sign of God's generosity for his holy place. I hope that the Blessed Mother will be for you, for each of you, a light on the path leading us to her son, to entrust your whole life to her, as did the John Paul II, whose monument stands here for today and will be here always. It will be the form of the procession after the benediction of, of the Bishop Martin. We form the procession first from the cross, after the order in indication with the flags and the, you know and the, 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 the altar boys, priest, Bishop Martin and after us everybody will be followed to, and will be going to to the monument of John Paul II will be saying the litany to all the same.
Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, through God and through man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be. Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. 
Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in His angel and His saint. Blessed be God in His angels and in His saints. here to honor and to be honored and to pray and to inaugurate a monument that represents our beloved son Saint John Paul II. When I was nominated rector of our Lady Dafino Shrine in Gautamu, the Marological Marian Congresses, which the Pontifical Marian Academy holds every third year in a different European country. These Congresses were not just a week of simple talks, but they included a month of prayers and celebrations in the diocese which holds the Congress. At the approach of the centenary of Blessed Virgin Mary to call Carmela Grima in 1883, I began to think what should be the best action to celebrate, to make the event as spiritual <coughs> as possible. Among the many options, I thought the Marjorical Marian Congress would be the best option. So I presented my request to the Maltese Episcopal Conference to invite the Pontifical Marian Academy to hold the coming Congress in the islands of Malta and Kosovo. He gladly accepted the offer and immediately referred the case to His Holiness John Paul II, who enthusiastically gave his approval. I also wish to be present for the conclusion of the Congress, but due to certain difficulties, they had to postpone his pilgrimage. In the year 1984, I had the honor to meet His Holiness John Paul at the general audience at St. Peter's Square and present to him a full-size icon of Madonna Tapino together with an album with the photos of the various activities that took place during However, what did not happen in 1993 occurred seven years later. In May 1990, John Paul came to Malta. His first activity in Malta was visiting Tapino Shrine. The 
the next day, from the over here, here's a, a right one, he prayed in front of the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's a perpetual icon, a perpetual lamp in front of the image. Concelebrated solemn holy mass on the parvis of the shrine and decorated the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary with five golden stars studded with precious stones. In February 1995, St. John Paul placed a, a brass cross that is affixed to the majestic concrete cross overlooking the Freud during the, a general audience at St. Peter's Square in Rome. In 1997, St. John Paul blessed the stone preserved here in the church of the Blessed Virgin Mary during a general audience in St. Paul VI Hall in the Vatican, which stone is intended to serve as the cornerstone of the big church that one day will be built on these Marian grounds. Therefore, as the creator of this Marian center, I felt that after our Lord Jesus Christ and the Immaculate Mother Mary, we must give a special honor to St. John Paul II as well for honoring us with so much help and honors and we pray that he will continue to intercede for us and for every person who comes here with good good intentions with the holy spirit the holy trinity and our heavenly mother mary thank you It's a moment of blessing of this statue, this consecrated to the honor of this of this shrine. He, John Paul II will be the second patron, the protector of this shrine.